Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We pray that the Word of God will strengthen your faith and that your worship with us will bring joy to your hearts and lives. We are glad to have you join us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our celebration of Christmas draws near, focuses directed in words of prophecy and promise to the blessings which that Savior give, brings, the blessings of forgiveness and peace which are ours. The first lesson for the fourth Sunday of Advent is recorded in the book of the prophet Micah chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 85. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is recorded in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 5. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then he said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. First he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, although the law required them to be made. Then he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. 
Alleluia. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Alleluia. The Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. But he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. But the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. This is the gospel of our Lord. We make confession of the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Word of God for our meditation, a gospel reading recorded in Luke chapter 1. My dear Christian friends, what a great God we have. When we stop and consider everything that our God has done for us, when we consider what He is like, then we naturally want to, to praise and glorify Him. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, loving and just. He has created this world and given us everything that we have. And most important, in His grace, He is redeemed us miserable sinners. He has given to us the gift of His Son to be our substitute, our Savior. Now what a great God we have. He deserves our praise and honor. And that's exactly what Mary does in our Gospel reading. Shortly after hearing the announcement from the angel Gabriel that she was to be the mother of the Savior, Mary travels to the hill country of Judea to, to visit her relative Elizabeth. And it's understandable why Mary would want to see Elizabeth. When the angel announced to Mary that she was to be the mother of the Savior, he also told her that Elizabeth had conceived and was expecting a child. And Elizabeth's pregnancy was something of a miracle as well. Elizabeth and Zechariah had no children. She was considered barren. And now, both of them were advanced in years. It was unlikely that Elizabeth would conceive and give birth to a child. In fact, when the angel appeared to Zechariah to announce the birth, Zechariah in doubt questioned, said, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. Well, Mary, hearing the news from the angel, wastes no time, but she hurries to visit her relative. No doubt with excitement that the, the news that her barren relative advanced in years was now miraculously expecting a child. But Mary could hardly have expected the kind of welcome that she received from Elizabeth. Elizabeth exclaims that Mary is blessed among women, for she is the mother of the Messiah. Elizabeth says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Well, Mary is blessed by the Lord, and Mary's child is a blessing for all. And what a welcome greeting that must have been for, for Mary. How comforting and encouraging for her. Now Elizabeth, by faith, recognized that the, the child Mary was carrying was her Savior. Like Luke tells us that the Holy Spirit filled the soul of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth then praises the faith of Mary. Remember, this time Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, was unable to speak. When the angel had announced to Zechariah that his wife would have a baby, Zechariah, in unbelief, had asked for a sign. And the sign was that he wouldn't be able to speak until the baby was born. Well, what a contrast Mary is to Zechariah. In humble faith, Mary accepted the Lord's announcement. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And Elizabeth here marvels at Mary's faith. But what a wonderful example of faith really both Mary and Elizabeth are for us. In faith, Mary humbly accepted the angel's announcement. In faith, Elizabeth recognized Mary's unborn child as the, the Savior of the world. And we even see the, the Lord's grace and power in the unborn John the Baptist, the, the baby who leaps with joy in the womb at the coming of the Savior. How hard it can be for us to humbly accept at times the Lord's Word. How often, like Zechariah, we want a sign from the Lord, some, some great evidence. And yet by grace, God has worked faith in our hearts to believe and to trust His Word and promises as well. We also are blessed. 
Now Mary was blessed. And by grace, God gave her the, the special honor to be the mother of the Savior. Mary is blessed. By grace, God was providing her with a Savior. Mary is blessed. By grace, the Lord worked faith in her heart to believe and to trust His promises. And in response, Mary expresses her joy in song. And what an honor and privilege to be chosen to be the mother of the Lord, the, the mother of the Savior of the world. And yet in many ways, it put Mary in a difficult situation. She wasn't married yet. Now, this would not be an easy thing for Mary to go through. Imagine what her neighbors and friends and relatives might have thought and what they might have said when they learned she was pregnant. And we know how Joseph felt when he learned that Mary was going to have a child. He decided he wasn't going to marry her. Took a visit from an angel to persuade him to take Mary home as his wife. If this is what Joseph thought about her, then what do you suppose the, the rest of the people of, of Nazareth would be thinking? And yet in spite of the difficult circumstances, she speaks of great joy. Now she praises God, not herself. She points away from herself and to the Lord's promises now fulfilled. Now Mary had no special merit or worthiness in herself. But she too was a sinner. She too needed a Savior. She recognizes her humble status as a servant. And she'll be praised because of what God has done. And when the angel announced to her that she would have a son, she didn't see how that was possible. She was a virgin. Such a thing had never happened before. According to all scientific knowledge, it was and, and is impossible. But the angel told her, nothing is impossible with God. And God had done a great thing for Mary. And what He did for Mary, well, doing that for Mary, He did that for us. God performed this miracle so that you and I might be saved as well. Now God had promised to rescue sinful mankind. He promised to send a Savior. Thousands of years before it happened, He promised. He promised to Adam and Eve. He promised to Abraham, to David, to many others. And now, through Mary, God is keeping all those promises. And Mary trusted those promises of God. She trusted the word of the angel who was God's messenger. As difficult as it was, she trusted that the Lord would do as He had promised. In fact, she was so sure, she speaks as, as though it was all already done. The child she would bear would accomplish her salvation and the salvation of the world. And he hadn't been born yet. He hadn't yet lived perfect life as the sinner's substitute. He hadn't yet gone to the cross to make sacrifice for sin, but God had promised, and therefore it was as good as done. Mary trusted those promises of God, and yet don't we have to confess sometimes we're tempted to that be ashamed of God's Word? Perhaps we're afraid of Others, how they might ridicule us if we follow what the Bible tells us. There are those who, who would find all kinds of fault with what the Bible says. Many want to, to change or ignore what the Bible says because it doesn't fit with what society thinks. It doesn't fit with my logic or thinking. But remember, these are the very words of God. These are the promises of God. When God says something, it is true. When He promises something, it comes true. God has said, your sins are all forgiven in Christ. Through Jesus, the way to heaven stands open. Don't doubt one minute that it is true. God has made us many other promises as well. He promises to always be with us. He promises to provide for us and care for us. He promises to make all things work for our eternal good. How difficult it can be at times to trust God's promises. 
But God is always able to help. He's always able to keep His promises. And so when we face difficult times, when we wonder if, if God is there, well, remember this great miracle. He caused His Son to be born of a virgin to save us from our sins. Certainly God can and will do whatever is necessary to help us in this life and to save us for eternity, even if it seems impossible. God will always keep His Word. And that Word will never pass away. In fact, we have a demonstration of that in our reading. When Mary spoke of the birth of, of her child, her son, she said, from now on all generations will call me blessed. Now think of that. Can you imagine a young unmarried girl about to have a, a baby saying, from now on until the, the end of the world, people are going to talk about what a great thing God did for me. You might expect Mary to say, from, from now on, I'm going to be disgraced. And yet, these words of Mary are true. Here we are more than 2,000 years later speaking about the wonderful blessing that came to Mary. And God is faithful. He's kept all His promises. And in doing so, God has shown to us His mercy. Now, Mercy is the kind of love that a person has for someone who's in, in great and desperate need. Someone whose situation is, is so terrible, so hopeless that, that our heart goes out to him. Well, we were in that situation. We were miserable sinners whose situation by nature was hopeless. Our situation was an eternity doomed to hell. But God has mercy. In fact, Mary tells us to whom God has shown His mercy. It's those who fear Him. As sinners... We certainly have reason to fear God. He's perfectly just. He hates sin. He will not tolerate it. He demands that all sin be paid for. So what we deserve is, is punishment forever in hell. But a proper fear of God is not that we're scared of Him. It's not what God desires. The proper fear that God wants us to have is a holy respect. We recognize who we are before a holy God, that we're sinners. But the fear of God also means that we look to Him and trust and recognize His love and mercy. It's a fear that flows from faith. In some ways we might compare it to the relationship between a child and a loving parent. The, the child might have a certain fear of punishment if they do wrong, but the more they recognize the love of that their parent has for them. Mary also points us to the fact that God shows mercy to the humble. Humble are those who recognize their sinfulness before God, who realize nothing we can do to earn God's favor or salvation. No reason to boast. The, the proud, on the other hand, look to themselves for salvation, think they're, they're good people who by their works deserve something from God. The hungry likewise have nothing, whereas the rich look to themselves and what they can accomplish to make them right with God. And it's those poor and humble that know the Lord's mercy. And it's a temptation for us to be proud, or to think ourselves rich. After all, we live good Christian lives, we follow God's Word. We'd like to think that we're pretty good people. We need the reminder of God's law that that isn't the case. Before God, we're sinners. God's law crushes us. But He does that so that He can then lift us up to the glories of heaven with the, the message of the Gospel, the message of full and free forgiveness because of His grace and mercy shown us in Christ Jesus. And we really will never know what it means to have a Savior, never know God's mercy, never know what the, the birth of Jesus really means until we first recognize the terrible sinners we are. 
And those who are not ashamed of what they've done, those who are proud of their own goodness, well, they can never expect anything from a Savior. Or those who are mighty, those who think that they are strong enough to save themselves, that they can do what God expects of them, well, they'll never rejoice in the birth of the Savior. And only the humble, the hungry, those who know that they are lost, know what then a great and glorious thing it is that the, the Son of God became a child, born of the Virgin Mary, to be our Redeemer, to rescue us from sin by His perfect life and His sacrificial death. As you and I know God's great mercy. And the result then of God's faithfulness and mercy is that He has established His eternal kingdom. But God promised David that one of His descendants would sit on His throne forever. Mary points out that God's mercy lasts forever. A Jesus rule will continue forever, even after this world has been destroyed, forever in heaven. But one day, our Savior Jesus will come back, not as a humble baby as He came that first Christmas, but He will come in glory as King of, of kings to judge all. And what a glorious day that will be for us, because Jesus will take us from this world of sin to His eternal kingdom of heaven. And that eternal home is certain. It's certain because of what God accomplished through the Virgin Mary. He sent His Son into this world. Jesus, born in this special, miraculous way, was born without sin. He's the very Son of God and therefore a sufficient sacrifice to pay for the sins of the entire world. And Jesus' resurrection is proof. We can be sure that His kingdom endures forever. We can be sure that we will be raised from death to eternal life. Indeed, what a great God we have. He's faithful to every promise that He makes. We can count on Him completely, absolutely. He has shown to us His great love and mercy. He gave His own Son to rescue us from sin and hell. And one day, we will be with Him in the glories of His heavenly kingdom forever. Uh, with a God like this, with confidence and joy, we can join with Mary. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, throughout the centuries, you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head. Through your prophets of old, you continually directed the eyes of your people to the advent of their Savior. We praise you, O Lord, for keeping your promise and sending your Son to destroy the works of the devil. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, use your mighty word to shatter our pride and to rouse us from spiritual slumber and apathy. Move us to take to heart the words of John. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. You sent your Son to redeem us from sin. Let this good news be our joy and strength. Use it to cheer the lonely, encourage the fearful, and give hope to the despairing. In these days before Christmas, spare us from the stress of deadlines and the frenzy of commercialism. Fill our lives with the message of your peace and the music of your grace. Direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your Son coming again, not as a lowly child, but as the Lord of Lords. Lift up our hearts in joyful anticipation of that day. Come quickly, Lord Jesus in your grace, in your power, and in your glory. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.